Good evening. Quick update on a couple uh, 2A uh, related pieces of news we got recently. So, as I'm sure everyone just saw, this uh, Safer Schools bill, whatever they call it. What's it called here? The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act on Friday, right? That just passed the Senate, the House. It's on to Biden now, who will know will sign it. It's and it's the, the largest piece of anti-gun legislation in the last 14 years. Um, what it basically does is it closes the void for loophole, which does nothing. All it does is raise the, the age for uh, purchasing firearms from 18. This is rifles from, from 18 to 21, which that in and of itself is a violation of the 2nd and 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Um what it also does is gives money to those states that already have red flag laws. And it's a bribe to encourage other states like my state, Iowa, to enact red flag laws that we know violate the fourth amendment, right? Due process. So me being a veteran, um, be, being a very outspoken pro 2A, pro freedom guy, I'm definitely high on that list of the want, you know, who would want to be red flagged. I don't want to be, but of course, you know, people would want to red flag me. And all it would take is a, a phone call, true or not, whatever, to say, hey, you know, blah, 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 Dylan. I heard Dylan yelling at his wife. I think he beat her up. I don't know. My guns are gone. My rights are gone. And then I got to prove that that, that did not happen, which my wife, of course, would help with that. And or if, if a family member was just to say, oh, we think Dylan's crazy. Um, we want his guns taken for whatever reason. It would just happen. Right. It's a little ridiculous, and that'll become a it, it, it'll become weaponized. So you'll have ex girlfriends, you know, or boyfriends calling on their former I don't know former boyfriend girlfriend whatever spouses whatever. Um, if you have some left leaning people in your family, they will weaponize this this red flag laws essentially and use it to strip you of your rights. And then you got to prove you're not crazy. You got to prove you're of sane and sound mind that that you're okay to own these firearms and all that good stuff. You know, it would take nothing for that to become weaponized and used against those of us who value and cherish our rights to keep our arms. Um, so yeah, it's just, that's a big part of that is just the funding aspect of the boyfriend loophole, whatever. But good news is the Supreme Court uh, just had a split decision on six, it was a six to three split decision, right? Very good, very much in favor of the conservatives. Um, what that did, it was the New York State, I'm going to try to get this right, New York State Pistol and Rifle Association, or vice versa, Rifle and Pistol, one of the two, um, versus Bruin, which I believe Bruin was the, is the police chief or an attorney in New York, this is against, so New York has what's called this proper cause law, and what that essentially means is unless you can prove proper cause that you need a you know, in, in New York, they have a concealed carry permit or concealed permit license, whatever. Like in Iowa, we have a permit to carry, so we don't have a concealed permit. It's just a permit to carry. So we can open, conceal, whatever. So anyways, New York has this proper cause law, and the Supreme Court just shot this down and reaffirmed the right to keep bear arms outside the home, which is very similar to um, D.C. versus Heller, which uh, reaffirmed the right to keep bear arms inside the home. So... Like that, this is very monumental. This is huge. This is a huge, massive win. Um, so in New York, though, in order to prove proper cause, you've got to, they, they basically limit it to former law enforcement. You can get permits, permits to carry, the concealed carry permits. Um, celebrities, of course, you know, because they're special people. They're elite and they deserve to have the, the protection, you know, of a firearm. But those average citizens, we can't. Uh, cash business owners. Those who deal in cash business, they can prove proper cause. But the average citizens like you and like me, we absolutely cannot get a permit to carry in New York. Uh, this should hopefully change that as well as nationwide. So in, what this will do is open up the shall issue uh, carry across the nation. So in 2010, the, uh, the Iowa Farmers Coalition, or at the time Iowa Carry, was... The group who is responsible for changing Iowa's may issue carry to shall issue carry. And when it comes to the courts and whatnot, the shall, the may, that kind of, that's all important stuff, right? So 
what that did is it, it essentially made it from where under May issue, it was up to the sheriff's discretion. You had to go to the sheriff, apply. If he didn't like you, if he was left-leaning, or if he just didn't, didn't want the average person to have a gun, he may not issue it. But under the shall issue, right? So unless you're under, you are barred from it, barred from owning weapons, you're a felon, pedophile, you know, all those uh, factors that might keep you from owning firearms, you can't get a permit to carry. But under the, yeah. Under shall issue, though, all those people who can legally possess firearms can legally carry. That's what it comes down to. So what this does nationwide, though, is it could possibly make it to where uh, we can have some shall issue permits nationwide, California to New York and everywhere in between. Pretty big deal. Um, unfortunately, here in Iowa, we had our, our congresswoman, Joni Ernst, who's, she is a combat veteran. And that's one of these huge talking points. Like, I'm a combat veteran, so I know what I'm talking about. Right? I am too. But I wouldn't have voted for this bill that she did. Right? She's been a very good proponent of the Second Amendment. She's been a good steward of the Second Amendment for us Iowans. Until that vote. It's as frustrating as it is, you know, but that she uses this platform of being a veteran and being the most pro 2A congresswoman, all that good stuff, then she goes and votes against this. Not, not only that, she just recently was on Simon Conway and defended it. She defended her vote, her statements, and <laughs> didn't make a whole lot of sense in the process. But, you know, aside from that, though, I... I it's something else, but I'm glad the uh, Supreme Court is working on some pretty heavy stuff right now, expanding gun rights, which they're not really gun rights, right? They're, they're 2A rights. These rights were not given to us by the government. They can be taken away by the government or any rogue agency, right? So it's really just, just civil rights. They're protecting those, and, and they're already enshrined in the Second Amendment. But yeah, just for those who haven't, haven't seen, I mean, those are two massive things going on that I guess just happened. Um... Be sure to let your legislators who voted for the uh, Child Safety Act, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, right? Which one one big piece of that. So this all came, this the school act, whatever. This all stemmed from the shooting down in Uvalde, which is horrible. It's a tragedy. Um, but their knee-jerk reaction was, we got to pass anti-gun laws. And we got to protect schools. Okay, we'll pass anti-gun laws. won't do anything. Um, that's been proved time and time again. Protecting the schools. What they're doing is going to throw money at everything but the school. They're not going to put armed uh, teachers, uh, school resource officers in schools, which we, we all know, the statistics prove that the mass shootings likely don't happen in locations that are protected by people with guns, right? The good guy with gun. But they also stop very, very quickly when the bad guy meets resistance, Right, so whether it's throwing a chair at somebody or pulling a gun out and shooting them, the mass shooter tends to not get as far when he's got some uh, someone else shooting at him. Right? In this bill, this bipartisan Safe Communities Act, it specifically says that that money will not go towards arming any staff. It will not go towards hardening the schools, which what is what needs to happen. Either way, contact your legislators. That's It's very important that you do that. Call them, email them, leave a voicemail. Um, let them know your opinion. Uh, whether they voted for it or not, it's good to say, you know, either you shouldn't have or thanks for doing it and vice versa on any good bill. But I'm a very, uh, I'm, a, I'm a single issue voter nowadays and Joan Aaron's probably won't be getting my vote because of this. Um, and yeah, she's not up for re-election right now. Uh, so maybe that's why she's not concerned with losing votes. So I don't know. Have a good day. Hope you, hopefully, you know, you guys learned something new. Um, not just beating the horse, but thanks for watching. Appreciate it.